Yo, 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 what's good? What's good? It's myself, Jay Hall, and this is the Shape Up Podcast. And this is a special edition because we are on lockdown time. And I am here with the founder, Miss Charlotte Anderson. Hi, Char. Hey. And the homie Lawrence Cosby. What's up, Cos? What's going on? And um, we are on three way. <laughs> because um that's that's what it is you know we don't have the money that you see people on, on a lot of the other podcasts you see them on tv and they like talking to each other you know and they're like oh they they got the camera at their house yeah you know we're we not there yet but we want to bring it to you the best way we you know we know possible um because there's a lot of I mean, what, what, what can we say, Shara? Like, there's a lot, a lot going on when it comes to the, the lockdown as far as when it comes to people's anxiety and how they feel in when it comes to their mental health. And you brought this idea forth because, you know, you're being such a great person that you are. And, you know, you go ahead and you elaborate on what you wanted to kind of bring. Yeah, I, I mean, at the time where I thought about it, they were only talking about quarantining for what a couple weeks I think they're saying two to three weeks um and the virus the coronavirus was picking up and what happened for me I was definitely already having some anxiety um and then Jay Electronica released his album found me <laughs> and so <laughs> finally <laughs> finally <laughs> <laughs> and so he did this IG live around it, uh, and three weeks ago it wasn't that many people doing um, the IG lives as far as celebrities were concerned. Um, and so he did it, and it was very communal, and it was very like healing and it's washing, um, it's cleansing type of music. And so I hit up Lawrence, a true. Millennial fashion on Instagram. It's like, yo, we got to do this one. Um, and, and yeah, so they look back around today. But yeah, I just think a lot of people are feeling anxiety, especially now since we're looking at a long term quarantine, uh, being in the house. And um, for me, I'm listening to a lot of music and it's, it's really getting me through. Right. We want to break down ways that we we want to share how we cope with anxiety with our song choices and our music and what we love and we have these conversations on our own anyway you know and it's like why not you know share this so first of all let me just around the room or around the phone let me just ask everybody how are you doing Kaz, how you doing, bro? <laughs> how you how you how you holding up over there, bro? You know, laughing from crying. I feel like that's a loaded question. Like, how are you doing? And, and like, am I doing? You know what? I'm a lot. I think that that is the, the the best that I can do at this time. I'm uh, I'm hopeful. Um, I am, you know, socially isolating, and and I'm 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 here. And I think that that is um, there's a lot of effort in being here. And, mm. and I think that I I've been successful thus far, and I'm, and I, I hope to be here. Um, for as long as I can. Oh man, you know that's that's like a very touching response. I don't want to follow behind that, Charlotte. How you doing? Um, I get that question, you know, a lot, especially on these business calls, and and I answer the same way that I'm alive, and I think it varies from day to day, moment to moment. Um. You know, I can be having a good day, and especially like if there's a good IG live battle going on, and then I come to their timeline or um, Twitter or Facebook, and then it's like, boom, some bad news, and I come like right back crashing down. Um, but um, definitely dedicated to being here. I like Lawrence's words for hopeful. Um, and I think for me, I feel a little more wait trying to make sure all of us as many of us as possible can make it to the other side of this you know dang both of y'all gave really good political answers i mean really i mean really good heartfelt answers like i, I felt that yeah. in myself yeah i i i ain't yo 
I ain't all right, yo. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, yo. I'm not. I'm not okay, yo. So and it's so crazy because you know I see all the tags and people saying, you know, um, introverts, we're okay. Check on your extrovert. I'm an introvert, but here's the thing: I'm an introvert with extrovert practices. Like I like to go places on my own and you know go to a museum and get inspiration. I'm a creator. I like to walk around, get on the train. Right. You know, right. I don't. You know, be honest with you, I don't necessarily have to be around a lot of people. You know, I don't have to interact. I can. I just like to go and move that's how i cope with my anxiety or that's me as a person and even when you do step out for like 10 minutes well speaking for myself like when i do step out for like 10 minutes take a walk around the block you feel like you should be back in like it feels like the beginning of every zombie movie or world war z or the planet of the apes when all the humans were dying like i feel like i should not be outside and my anxiety is running crazy when i'm outside you know, and so I'm trying to stay out my own head and keep myself in routine. Like, I, you know, I still get up at five. I still do what I gotta do. I still work. I still try to exercise and everything because I'm somebody I can't be left in my own head like for too long. Like, sure. you know, what I'm, saying? I'm not going to front. I have my moments when I'm like, cool. But thank God for headphones. <laughs> like straight hey, up, real. which brings us to what this show is about. Like, thank God for headphones and so we the title. hey man dog hey. that's what we're going with hey. <laughs> you hey. know so we're going to kick it off um talking about the songs that has been you know that that have been getting us getting us through and so i like to pass it to my man cos cosby lawrence cosby because you know he's such a music you know what's what's the what's the great word you know scholar when it comes to it and i consider him my equal when it comes to certain things and you know the brother gets in depth so i really want to know what is a album or song that you kind of go to in moments like this and keep in mind we haven't had anything like this ever in our life like usually we can go to a grandparent they like oh that ain't nothing new ain't we ain't never had nothing like this but in something similar as far as dealing with um anxiety and dealing with like you say restlessness and being thankful and keeping yourself balanced What's one of or the album or song that you go to, Kaz? I think I, I want to start with the song. Um, and it, it's it's El Dai's The Healing Process. Um, El Dai is a member of Slum Village and one of the illest lyricists to exist. Wow. Um, 313, three, baby. 313, three, baby. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. My fault. Um, My fault. Detroit rapper. I can't, I can't help it, bro. He, he, El Dai has a song in which he like walks through anxiety meditation and mindfulness and i would never heard a rapper actually just do that it's almost an affirmation but he's rhyming and so he's talking about thanking god taking deep breaths you know taking a seat you know clearing your mind and when i you know had a job that's super stressful i would put that song on and, and after a while i liked the song but then i found myself doing it it's almost like a dance you, you know you have the cha-cha slide you do it but this was a song that was walking me through taking that time to center myself. And and I, I rediscovered it, you know, during this time. Like, wow, like this is, you know, the closest that some, you know, black people might get to, you know, things that are, are um part of therapy. And, mm -hmm. and 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 so when I say when I thought about anxiety, I thought about literally Elzai's the healing process is, you know, part of people taking control of the anxiety and giving you a step-by-step -step process through it. When did this song come out? Uh, it came out um, maybe like 2014, I think, uh, or 2016, 2016. It was on his Lead Poison album when was it that you felt like this song was the one like a go-to song for that did you know what anxiety was in that moment or was it just like you were going through some blues like what was it exactly to make you pinpoint that um i, I was going i was going through i had, had anxiety issues um you know i went to a, a doctor and and they had you know prescribed me you know some medication and you know i really started realizing like yo this is like my job my job is doing this to me um, but then I was like, you know what, I still have to do my job for now. So I have this medication that I'm taking, you know, I don't love it. Um, but I need a practice for myself and I needed, I needed a practice that was, um, key to me 
And, and what I did is I made a playlist. I made a, every morning, if I'm feeling anxious when I wake up, I hit play on this playlist, and by the time it's over, I'm good. Um, I, I've, I've worked through my anxiety I can face today. And it became a ritual with me, like waking up, boom, hit the playlist. Um, and when I decided to make the playlist, the first song that came to mind was the healing process. And that's what I titled it. And that's been my go-to for, you know, four years now. That's what's up. What about you, Shara? What's your, what's, your, what's your first track that you can think of that helped you through those moments? So since um, the one that, that brought me to this idea was um, Jay Electronica's um, written testimony, I'm going to stick with it um, for my first submission, for sure. Um, because I felt like it gave me, I mean, sonically, right? It was very healing. Um, but I feel like it gave me a lot of hope as well that through this this season of uncertainty that, you know, miracles can still happen. <laughs> Jay, like, I'm the drop in the album was, is a miracle. Um... Hello? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, it, is, it is a miracle. Like, I, I still have a hard time believing that the album dropped this. I'm, right. sti- I'm still believing that somebody else is in the studio with Will Hove. Like, I'm, you know, that's just my theory. But, <laughs> but don't listen and, to me. And that's, and that's the thing, too. I think um, I think for me, it's, it's Jay Electronica having a complete story, you know, that's out, um, that was well done that was true to who he was as that, that we've known him as an artist. Um, I think Hope being there, like holding his hand and collaborating with him to make sure it happened, uh, bringing in, you know, um, the support team that he needed, you know, for production as well. Everything about it, I think if anybody can bring out the best lyrically, um, Jay-Z, it's Jay Electronica. And I feel like that that synergy, that push and pull, um, we got some of the best quality raps that we've heard from Jay-Z in at least 10 years, probably. I mean, 440. Uh, um, oh, see, you about but, to go into a whole other conversation, Shar. Stop. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was saying, I can, I can I was feel saying, Lawrence. I can feel Lawrence on the other end. I'm over here like, what? what? <laughs> okay. Like, so everybody want to have an opinion to, about that. <laughs> Um, is my is my first comedy um, song. And I feel like a lot of songs of it is fitting, especially um, the song he wrote to his mother. Um, following and then following Kobe's untimely passing um, this year, it's it's been like it, it deals with that pain, that that grief, um, and I think we're we're in a grieving process. Um, but I think once you loop it back around, you kind of get this hope again. And, and find like the meaning of, of why we're here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, <laughs> I don't know how to follow behind that, but that's true, though. I think um, knowing why you're here, or I think as humans, we're always trying to figure out like why we're here. And I right. think that during this lockdown time, that's one of the things that might be can cause an issue to certain people because you're asking yourself questions that you don't necessarily all the time have time to ask Ooh, so this true. is a moment yeah. that people are really finding themselves like in their head because we we get up we work we do all these things we go to the store we, you know we're taking care of our kids we're taking care of this we're taking care of that and it's like you look up and you're like you don't necessarily get a chance to you know being reflective is something that people like to put on memes but that's not good for a lot of people a lot of people don't want to reflect, you know, so I think that's a good perspective you said. So for myself, when we first had this conversation about, you know, what's an album, when we first was talking about we're going to choose albums, we're going to choose songs, you know, I'm one of those people like I struggle with when you put me on the spot, you ask me because I'm always feeling like I'm going to miss something. And in some weird way, being a music lover, I'm always feeling like I'm disrespecting all the other songs that got me through, right? Yeah. 
True. So, <laughs> so all I can say is let me forgive myself first before I even enter this conversation. And <laughs> and to Lauren's point, like I do have a playlist that I have. I got many playlists, but I do have a playlist called Zoned. And it's my own personal playlist. And it's when I just put the most random abstract songs that just kind of get me through. I'm, I definitely have albums that I can mention that I can play from beginning to end, but I felt like for this particular conversation, it's not necessarily about the album. So I went through my zone playlist and I ran into my first song that I remember playing when I was a, a little homie and I was dealing with issues that I couldn't identify at that time. Cause you know, back in the day, we wasn't having conversations about anxiety and all that other stuff, you know? <laughs> So the first song that I pulled up that used to get me through was Erykah Badu, Other Side of the Game. Oh. Hands down, like Other Side of the Game. Because for me and mine and my generation, that was the first time I had heard a woman talk about, like, I know what you're going through. That was a woman. Like, um, right, you know. <laughs> yeah, like I had, you know, R&B for me and what I was receiving in my ears at that time you know, it was heartache. It was heartbreak. You you broke up with me or I love you. It was either you love me or you broke my heart. Mm, Erica true. was talking about her man who is out here in this game and I'm worried about you and we have a child and we going to make it through and I know you stress. Like, I had never heard that before. Southern women. Southern women. <laughs> I had never, I never, I never, I never heard that before. I'm sorry. Like, I, I didn't. I was a, I was a teenager and nobody, you know, I felt like she was talking to me, you know, like I, 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 I really felt like she was coping me through and everything I was going through at that time. And, you know, te teenage hall who was just running around crazy and knocking stuff down like she really slowed me down because Erica was Erica also was cool. You know, yeah. that was another thing, too. Like she was attractive, but she was cool. Like she was so cool. And she just slowed you down. Like, just brought me down. And so every once in a, you know, I, I, of course, I have my periods where I play it all the time or, I, you know, I play it. But it, it hits the same every time. Like, yeah. when she just come on and what you going to do when they come for you? Like, man, what am I going to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I played that through so many. Listen, I played that. I played that back in the day when I was running wild, and, you know, saying doing things I wasn't supposed to do. I played that. The last time I really played it and those words resonated, man, was when uh, I was about to get evicted out of my apartment. And I was just playing it because I knew I ain't had the money for no rent. And I knew they were coming. And she was like, what you going to do when they come for you? I'm like, I don't know, Erica. I don't know what I'm going to do when they come for me. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And they came. You know what I mean? I had nothing to, I had nothing to do, right? So, um, But it really got me through because there's a reward. or I don't want to say reward, but she gives me... I'm using them, I'm using one of those words I don't really like to use a lot. You know, she 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 gave me a sense of she definitely gave me hope. You know, like we're gonna make it through and everything. I remember like the way she sung the song. I couldn't even I didn't even know when the chorus was coming in. It was just like one long um, talk with me. You know, one long beautiful vocal talk and just getting me through. And I I'm gonna tell you something else. I felt that support from a black woman. Like I, I it was like, I, I remember that's one of them early songs where I recognized myself as a black man. And usually when I would hear songs back in the day like that, you know, the the nineties hip hop songs, it was about you being a target, you know, the cops coming to get you, people trying to shoot you, da, 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 da. Okay, cool. I was used to that. But this is the first time I had heard a woman tell me like, yo, I'm, I'm like worthy and I'm, I'm going to get there. And I just felt like she was in tune with my blackness, you know, even though I was a teenager. I know that's a lot, but, you know what I mean? I felt that way. I started twisting my hair later. Really? No, I didn't. I'm lying. But okay. you get the point, though. <laughs> I twisted my hair much more later, years later. But, yeah, but she 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 got me through, man. So, yeah. So, and I think, too, just a, a half a second, like, that video, too, was beautifully shot as well. And just seeing that visualization of... of them to her and Andre 3000 at that point. Yeah. Um, loving each other and you know, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And I also saw that within all of the guys that were olding me, all, all the big homies, all the OGs that that were in that that were in the game. Seriously, you saw that that down period because they always had like a suit of armor, like everything was okay. 
But there was those moments where you could see them kind of sitting on the porch and everything was not okay. And I felt like she was talking to them. And I felt like not only was she talking to people in the game, but she was talking to people who work in jobs they don't like. You know, like that song right. still applies now. Like, you know, Kaj, you was talking earlier, like you had a real stressful job. You know, like when she say other side of the game, like, you know, the game can, as we know, as we get older, the game can be anything. It can be, it can be what you're doing illegally legally, or something that you're doing uncomfortable to make ends meet. Something that we're all right. used to doing, you know. And I felt like she understood that and she, she provided that other perspective, you know, so. That's mine. Kaz, what's another one you got, bro? Uh, How I Got Over It, the Roots album from 2010. And I would say this is probably the most get me through life album that I've ever played. And now I feel guilty because I don't have it on vinyl. I will I'll make it uh, I'll make it up to him. But um, I needed something to get over. This is my post law school, starting my career. You know, your whole life is defined by academics. Now you're in the working world. Like, what am I really doing? Is this what I want to do? Is this who I want to be? And then the Roots come out with this album that is how I got over. And I'm like, yeah, why do the Roots need to get over? They're a successful band. They've been successful for years. But this is the time in which they got into Jimmy Fallon. Mm -hmm. They went from, you know, underground superstars to, you know, blowing up to kind of a, a dark period. And now, like, they made it. Like, their mortgages paid. Like, their kids are going to school. And, but now they're kind of dealing with their personal issues. Like, I've been grinding so hard, I never really had time to reflect on who I was and and, and where I want to be. I, I just knew I had to get this goal, but once I got the goal, I was like, now what do I do? And I felt that that level of, you know, existentialism is something that happens to a lot of people um, and they need to how to get over it and what drew me to the album is that it, it it was hard I mean it was still super rap but it also had you know fear God it had gospel influences it had folk rock in influences and, and it, it asked the questions that I was afraid to ask myself and, and gave me the answers and I was like oh man um, and, and I think that's what was really great about music like this is that you, you're not alone. And once you realize that there are these paths that people that you might look up to or, or have an affinity to have walked, and you realize that, okay, I, I don't have to go through the wilderness or, or build my own path. I, there are, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel and there's somebody at the end of the tunnel too. So how I got over, you know, really inspired me to say, okay, I can get over it too. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm actually on the other side. And, and, and what I really love about the album is the sequencing. It, 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 it starts with Dear God, um, you know, that plea of like, you know, um, I walk alone. And then it ends with, you know, like the fire and, and you know, tunnel vision. And it kind of shows you the, the progress of questioning, answering, doing. It's like, Ooh. that that path of like if you have depression or anxiety you you know knowing is half the battle it's like, okay i accept it you know and then i um i do what i gotta do what about That's you sean um so <laughs> um when you said erica i do my heart dropped because my my next one was um mama's gun the album. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was like one whole song for for forty five minutes. <laughs> Listen, and, and it kind of goes with what uh, Lauren says about sequencing, but everything, every emotion that I felt inside of this quarantine and the social isolation, um, I think she addresses it right. So she starts with penitentiary philosophy. <laughs> so this is how. Yeah. This is not the ten, of course, but it's just like this this extreme lockdown situation that we're all having to go through, and like that time to reflect, that time to pause, and then she goes into these these sequence of songs that are about identity, self worth, um, finding yourself, um, developing yourself, and um, yeah, it's just beautiful. Before she even touches on like the love aspect, it's a it's it's a call for self love. It's a call for uh, ownership. It's a call for 
for peace within yourself to deal with whatever is happening for you. Um, and then by the time she gets to Orange Moon, as she's going into meditation, and I feel like the same kind of way, like even just the way she's delivering the song is kind of this the sound bathing that she's doing. It forces you to calm and slow down. She takes her time with the song. Um, it is it is a, it is reflection to how we are a part of the universe, but then we're also like small in, in comparison, right? And um, but we all have something to contribute. Um, and then she talks about love and, and these connections. But then also, too, I just feel like she touched on it, too, about, like, you know, uh, uh, like, booty. She's like, you know, your, uh, your man is, is in my face. And <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you need to handle that. <laughs> look at, look at, <laughs> what a... In the world of left, in the in the world of left turns, <laughs> Char, let me let me find our Charlotte out here. Like, yeah, it's quarantine, but I ain't forgot. You know, like right. And so I feel like that's been the energy from these people, these men specifically, who who have had time to reflect, and then like the energy is going in a lot of different you know places, and you have to be intentional with your energy as. As people, just individuals, but you know, I definitely uh, this was uh, geared towards women. Like, no, like we're not, we're not doing that. And um, yeah, so you know, I just feel like you address everything. I feel like eighty to two thousand um, can be eighty twenty twenty. <laughs> like, um, and I feel like her voice is is calming and spiritual. She is a fellow Dallas woman, so I feel like she taps into like everything um that i've experienced as a black woman coming into her own and creating identity for herself um and i felt like in that identity like in in this alone time to be really okay with who i am and even if that means the failures the 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 sleeping through the anxiety through um you know the spurts that i have of a, a focus and to own that and and to persevere you know that makes me want to bring up the question is there a difference between anxiety and black anxiety mm, for sure what would you say to do? What would you? <laughs> what would you what? I'm not a psychologist. No, no, nah, nah, you know we 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 not claiming to be you know 100 correct, you know. But I mean, what what would you say is black anxiety? I think that's a layer of oppression uh, that is is always there. I'm pregnant, um, and we navigate life based off that mm-hmm. that oppression, and that's. In our personal lives, in our definitely professional lives, and we're out in the public, um, even if we're on in our house, and you know, it's too many black people on the front porch, you know. So there's 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 always this um, this added layer of self preservation, uh, preservation, being black in America um, to survive. What about we you, Al? Yeah, we even have different like terms for it. I like, won't say you know I have anxiety, my nerves bad. You know, Yo, I forgot about together. that. <laughs> once I once I put that together, I said we've been having anxiety, <clears throat> like, my nerves bad. You know, um, and and just how like, you got to be constantly aware and vigilant about you know your safety, not only from you know your community, but also from your government. You know, from from everything. So it's just a compounding stress. Um, you know, and I, and I think sometimes we talk about, you know, black people hypertension because of diet. We got hypertension because of the tent. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we don't have the carefree ability because society is out to get us. It has been. Um, so, yeah, man, I, a black anxiety, it, it, looks di- it looks different. You know, I mean, if I, I'm looking both ways, not only because I got to cross the street, because you're not... Some might pop off. Um, yeah, man, we, we have a, it's a different anxiety. You know, it's interesting that you even say that because I know a lot of brothers who are doing really well, or just black families that are doing really well, 
and the first thing their mind is on is purchasing weapons. Mm. That's the first thing their mind is on, right? Not how we can help people that's being laid off. They're like, no, things are getting drastic. I got to get a weapon. And trust me, I get it. You're trying to protect your family. I totally understand it. But to what Kaz is saying, that's people's first thought, like let you know how embedded black anxiety is within this. Because I know for myself, so my answer is yes. I definitely feel like black anxiety is a, is a different type of anxiety. I don't want to say that my anxiety is is more than someone else's. I'm just going to let you know that it's different. Okay, so you can argue with me on Twitter later on. But what I <laughs> <laughs> but what I will suggest, what I will tell you is, I know for myself, I'm already feeling like I have issues with my freedom. That everywhere I go, there's some limitation to what I can do. I'm already feeling like every time I have to do something. I'm always got to overcome something, even if it's simply me crossing the street. When I step out the door, it's a gamble if I come back, no matter how successful I am. I already feel that way. So now that we're on lockdown, that's a lot, that's, that's a lot of systematic like triggers that are going on within me where I'm like, man, this is another situation. I can't, I can't breathe. I can't get out. I can't do that. And so it can come across. I get it that we do need to stay in, you know, and. In order for this, I mean, the, regardless of our leadership, the best scientists and doctors have told us the one remedy they can suggest is or, you know, come across our heads the most is staying indoors. And I, and I get all that. But it does come across a little dismissive to certain people who are a privilege that are just like, won't you stay in? Well, I don't have your big three story house. You know, <laughs> with your big walk around TVs on service, like some people live in some really struggling conditions in their home yeah. and i gotta sit home and i gotta deal with that like i gotta look at that every day there are women who are in domestic violence relationships you yeah. know what i mean that are staying at home so it's not just as easy as people who are making it out to be i i i'm not making no excuse for some of those fools that's yeah i'm not making an excuse for some of those fools that's playing ball in the park you know saying like i'm not talking about them but for certain people going outside or being able to step out is everything to them and I know right. for me, that's part of the triggers that I'm feeling. And which leads me to the song that I like. And I'm trying to tell you, when I tell you my stuff is random, is random off my zone playlist, um, is I like to play the song I like by Guy. Oh, yeah. I love, I love Guy. I like to play I Guy. I like, man. Because it, it, it was the song that I saw my folks, my parents and all of them and, and my family, my uncles and everything. That was the barbecue song. You know, that was the that was the block party song. And no matter it didn't matter what my mother was going through or what life threw at her, when she heard that trio, she was like that, getting that it. intro beat. That that intro, she was like getting it. You understand? And Teddy Riley at that time rude, you know. So anything that Teddy was on, it was like whatever. And people on the street just had a good time. And we're having a good time on the same block that we just had a funeral on. And the, the shift was like that. But when you heard Guy and you heard I Like, that was just like the anthem. And so whenever I hear that now or I'm feeling some type of way, yeah, don't get me wrong. I like to hear songs that are describing exactly what I'm going through in that moment. But when I hear Guy, man, it makes me just want, it gives me a certain energy, a bolt. You know, it, it gives me, it gets my mind right. Like it charges my mind. It gives my brain a slap, if that, if, if, if that makes sense. And it lets me know that there's some type of, joy that i can feel and if i live long enough or whatever i can have my barbecue i can have my block party and i can have my good time and it reminds me of that that everything isn't so cloudy that there is something else on the other side of that so when i play guy i'm man yo i gotta get up and do the old school dances and this i feel cheated because as a kid i was too young to do the dances with the big kids and i'm too old and i look stupid <laughs> And I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel yeah, bad about it. You're not it. too old. You're still going to dance. And we're going to have a black party as soon as we open this. So. Well, I'm, I can't. Put that, put, that, put that on the playlist. Okay, okay, so you know what I'll say? I can't. Let me. You, you, you're right, Shar. I can do the dance, but I just got to make sure. I will do the dance. I just have to make sure I'm covered, insurance-wise, because, <laughs> yeah, man. you know, when you fall, when you fall, boy, that, that get up is just... <laughs> <laughs> That get up as a beast. It ain't, you know, you try to do the trying to do the kid and play when you're when you're nine versus trying to do the kid and play when you're 39 is a different animal. <laughs> because if I was unsuccessful at nine, I'm definitely gonna be unsuccessful it as an adult. That's just no question. Hilarious. It's no question. Um, Lawrence, what's another one for you, bro? Um, I'm gonna go with 
I mean, now you just you just change the whole trajectory, and I, you know, I like that. Now, I'm, a guy, I'm a guy fan, and I think it's important. You know, I, I like songs that describe how I feel in the moment, but also escapism. And Ooh. my number one escapism song is Mark Morrison's Return of the Back. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why did I see this Listen. coming? Why did I see this that coming? That is the most you bitter. Know? That is the most bitter <laughs> hype song ever. <laughs> but it's his theme song. It's his theme it's song. So Oh, for real? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I started DJing, and I'm going to put it in a set somewhere. It's going to be in there. It's in the writer. If you hire me, I'm going to play Turn of the Back. Because <laughs> I just love the song. It doesn't matter. I don't know. It literally wipes my memory of whatever I was doing in the moment. When it comes to <laughs> the only thing that exists is Return of the Mac. And I am wholly... In that moment, and, and and what's the anxiety when you got returned to that? Give me like three, <laughs> three minutes, thirty seconds of just Nirvana, and I'm I'm grateful for the song, and it's so great. I remember I bought it on vinyl, and I found it in a thrift store, and I ran home like Charlie with the golden ticket, and I put it on, and I'm playing it super loud, and my neighbor texts me, and goes, "I know what that is," and I'm like, "You do." And she texts back, Return of the Mac. <laughs> that is the most connected I've ever felt to a human being in my life to this point. And yeah, man, if we're talking about anxiety, man, we're talking about Return of the Mac because that, that song doesn't have any in it. And so you I don't you it. don't you don't have any personal like there's not a story because you know he talking about how he got cheated on everything. It's not nothing that you personally had kind of with it, just that the moment you heard it, it was a rap. Um, I mean, I've loved it since a kid, you know, but also, you know, when I came to Delft and you had heartbreak, but then when you're back, when you're back, you put the turn of the Mac on and you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> is that what um, we do? <laughs> it, it is a, a, a renewal, a reincarnation, a, a reestablishment of who you are, because you are the Mac and you have returned. So it, 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 <laughs> Thank you, like, Lawrence. Sometimes can lie to you and tell you that you're not the Mac or you're not the best. But then when you tell yourself the truth and you come back to yourself, you return. Okay. That's I thought a lot about this. Okay. That's definitely going to be a part, part two. Uh. Okay. Okay. Shaw? Um, I'm going to still go with the Zen, the Zen music. And I... I've been listening to a lot of music. I was talking to Lawrence. I was like, I've had time to listen to a lot of music. And um, what I'm noticing is that I'm listening to music as collections, like an album from beginning to end again, versus like, you know, just tracks I actually want to listen to or put it on shuffle or put it on playlist. I'm like finding albums and listening to it from beginning to end. And it's been very, I don't know, therapeutic for me. Um, one of the albums that stood out that I revisited was uh, Kareem Bailey Ray. Um, wow, I haven't heard that name album. in a minute. Yeah, her <clears> self-titled <throat> album. Um, it just, it calms like the entire room. I can't do my yoga to it. I can't read to it. I can't fall asleep to it. Um, it kind of just puts me I, it, one, I think one of her videos was like her running through like a sunflower a field or something. Anyway, I thought I thought all really, of her videos she was running through a sunflower field. Yeah. That's just <laughs> that's, <laughs> like she was always in a video with a sundress and 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 no yeah. socks, no you know barefoot, you know. So exactly, and I feel like it transforms her music transforms my living space into this sunflower field that I'm running through, and it, it gives me this. Um, very spiritual uh, transformation of like how am I approaching this? Like, I still have you know health preferably, and I'm still have a roof over my head. I have groceries in my in my um, refrigerator, thank God. And you know, I can still think it. Kareem, 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 or is it Kareem? Kareem, Kareem. All right, so. Grim Bailey Ray music like transforms my space and I feel um just very fortunate to like be in a zen place. It's peaceful. 
uh, Jay, you had spoke about being in, in you know, um, some some women, some people are in domestic violence situations. Some people are in toxic tones. Some people aren't happy with the people that they have to live with. No. Nah. Um, but I, I don't have a problem. You know what I'm saying? It, I very much love myself. <laughs> 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 and I just feel really grateful. And uh, her music just, like, really kind of speaks to that gratitude of it. And I just feel good that I have a roof over my head. I have groceries. Um, you know, thank God, and I just feel very grateful for everything I do have instead of focusing on what I can't do and where I I don't have at this moment. You know, it it, it brings a shift of um, spiritual perspective for me, her music. Wow. When do you find, and this, this is a question for both of you, when do you find that it's a good time? to be proactive when it comes to going to these type of songs. Like when you know you're about to feel it. Like you say, okay, tomorrow I know there's a chance, man, my anxiety might start to get the best of me. Like when when do you guys personally know? When, when is it a moment for each of you that you can share? That's a great I, question. Me, it, I, I, I can feel myself waking up on the wrong side um, of the bed. And so what, what I'll do is, you know, I might tell Alexa to play a song, um, or I'll just have that soundtrack that is, you know, throughout my house, um, just playing music wherever I am, in order to go ahead and, and give me give me something to focus on that's not the stress, or, or just to take my mind away. Um, so I, I know as soon as I feel it, it's just like, yeah, let me go ahead and um, take control, at least for the, uh, the sound. If I can't control how I feel inside, I can control, you know, what I am taking in on the outside. Mm, that's true. Yeah, that's heavy. What about you, Shaw? I think for me, I'm naturally a happy, I have a naturally a happy disposition. Thank, thankfully, I think that's just who I am. So whenever I feel lows for more than maybe four or five hours, um, I can feel it's a drastic difference for me. So I can feel the weight of it. I feel the weight of like, I, feel, I, I think as um, impact, like I feel the weight of not just my collective like restraints, but like everyone else's and everyone's grief. So I can feel that energy. Um, so whenever I do feel that, I feel like I give myself time to grieve and feel sad, whatever I need to feel. And then for me, it's been communicating honestly. So when people are asking how I'm doing, I can say I'm having these low moments right now and uh, reach out to support and then um, you know sometimes it's music, sometimes it's reading sometimes it's going for a walk across the street or sometimes it's um, you know listening listening to music and reaching out to friends so I feel like whatever whatever that tangible thing is um, I think I, I feel it I give myself about four or five hours because I know if I don't nip it in the bud early it can you know be be four four or five days to four or five weeks you know um so let's try to prevent that okay um i'm gonna be 100 i'm gonna keep it a buck mine is every first and 15th like hands like of the month hands down um i've had i've had experiences coming up from childhood to young adulthood Mm. And there was always a financial situation. You know, I mean, I've had experience of, of eviction, like I said, you know, car repossession or my mother. I remember her getting her car stolen around the first. Like, I remember, like, when we was coming up around the first and 15th is when we always had to, like, be careful because mm. that's when people was, you know, you had to be careful. Like, like my mother and my grandmother got robbed at gunpoint um, when, wow. one day my mother was taking my grandmother to work. So the first and 15th has always 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 i've been on edge i don't care if i'm doing financially successful relationship successful like i don't care what the situation is i'm always kind of like my eyebrow i'm a little bit antsy around that you know like i know when that's coming like i'm just like i'm either going to get a phone call on some bs or whatever the case may be but something around that area you know twice a month i'm just i'm not i'm not feeling my best like i'm not and which is going to lead me to my you know my my track and Shaw, this might shock you but this is a track I've been playing recently. It's a gospel song. 
Ooh. I'm it's like, a golfer's song. I'm about to say, there's nothing you can play, you can, you can say right now that's it's, gonna stop it's you. A, it's a, it's a, it's a. Listen to like a vast array of music, like vast array. But when you say gospel, it's a gospel like, song, I, man. It's a gospel song. I went, I went back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gospel song, man. Because you know, and and it, and it's just to put it in context, you know, what I'm saying like I'm not, the, I'm not a huge gospel fan. Even though I'm from a city where gospel artists, legends live. Um, I just, I highly respect the craft. I'm just never really been a big fan, you know, but this gospel song I've been playing, I've been, I've been feeling God. Like I've been feeling it. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like I just really, 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 really been feeling it. And I've been like reading, um, I've been, I'm going to read this line and the reason why I've been really feeling this gospel song that's been really, really getting me through. Y'all mind if I do that? No, go ahead, Pastor. All right. Cool. You ready? Ready. All right. When you wake up before you brush your teeth, you grab your strap. Wow. <laughs> Only time you get down on your knees shooting craps. Fuck what you heard. God is blessing all the trap niggas. Dog. I need a moment. Dog. I, cannot, I, cannot. <laughs> I'm, I don't care. Like, I, I just, it caught me. I'm very vulnerable right now at this moment. I wish you could see my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, you might think I'm joking, but I'm. I was like, when well, you gonna play some Kurt Franklin? No, some, man. Uh, some Never would have made it. So, so dog. Listen, dog. Listen. <laughs> God is blessing all the trap niggas, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. I try to tell you. I I cannot explain to you why the most toxic nigga on the planet enlightens me the way he does. But bro, when I hear that, and it's I've been playing that on repeat because I'm the name of the song though. Tell the name of the song. It's future trap niggas. Trap niggas future man. It's just it just I I because it's like he's like God blessing all the trap niggas because he is. So if he blessing them, he blessing me. It just get me through, cause it, I, and all honestly, it, it does make me feel like I don't know. It remind me of some days that I live, and it remind me of some people that I know. But it does kind of give me a perspective, like everybody, no matter what they're doing or how they live in, everybody is feeling a certain type of way, and everybody is going to call on some spiritual, even when they in wrong. So yeah. if they are in wrong, then Jay Hall, no matter how non-traditional you may be you can humble yourself and you can call and you might say where why are you getting that from that but that's how i that's how i receive it is that yeah, i because i know fair. i know my big homies when they were they were getting ready to go drop off a package they used to say a prayer it was the weirdest thing but they would go say a prayer before they go do dirt and yeah. so if people like that can come down and they can feel a certain type of way then why can't I? And when I heard when I when I hear trap niggas now, it just it brings it brings me to that point. So I'm sorry, man. That joint is the gospel for me. And I just feel like when I hear it, I just feel like everything's gonna be okay. I mean, a couple of things. A, like, you know, when we talk about trapping, it's it's literally a means of survival, right? It's, it's not because we are rejecting, you know, um, jobs that we're not getting you know hiring hiring for those jobs we're not getting the funding to be educated and get the formal education that are required but anyway that's the whole system right on this on the next part of it though i for a second i felt bad because i didn't suggest the gospel music <laughs> <laughs> and i started feeling like a little sad like dang jay got a gospel but now i don't feel bad uh <laughs> hey man you, yeah you need to respect the prophet yo <laughs> You need to respect the prophet, yo. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, yeah, the future is is is, is peak toxic. So that's that. Hey man, listen. When I said that first bar, Lawrence was with me. I heard you, oh, Lawrence. You, it's, it's on. It's, it's, it's being recorded, bro. I heard you, bro. I heard you. Hey man, I, I was I was there, man. Because I, I I too am a fan of the non gospel gospel variety. Thank you. A, Thank you. A, a, I enjoy a God exists in many places. Like, you know, and he works in various ways. Um, I, I I feel the same. There's, it's so much like toxic, violent hip hop that gives, gets me really close to God. Um, 
I, I would say if I had to pick one, it'd be Chief Keith Finito. Oh, when see? it comes on, I, yeah, I want to blow the jersey out. Uh, but you know what? It's spiritual. Um, <laughs> it's it's a, a, a chance for me to release some of that anxiety and energy and, and just pent up rage in a way in which it's positive. It's just, you know, the song. It's just like, okay, yeah, okay. And, and trap, you know, with, with drill or, or whatever, that, that music, it allows us to, to be peaceful by, you know, giving an outlet. Um, so, you know, and I think that that is, um, it's important to have. Um, and nobody knows God more than, you know, somebody doing wrong. So, yo, that's so true. Yo, because here's the thing, right? The reason why I've been playing it recently because one day I just kind of was like, yo, let me just hit shuffle. Because, you know, sometimes we can just fall into routine and we continue to play our same playlist and things. like So I hit shuffle. And, yo, it came on and it gave me a feeling I haven't felt in a long time. And I guess I propose that because, you know, as you get older, you become like a, you know, become like a music snob a little bit. You, you, you know, you, 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 you become a little bit like, oh, I don't, I don't want to hear that. But in, in times like this, when life throws you something that you just wasn't expected, when you get thrown the unexpected, allow yourself to hear things that you never would give the opportunity to before. You know, well, I, I guess I had the song in there because, you know, I just had it because it was hot at the moment. I listened to it a couple of times. It is what it is. But not only did I listen to Trap Niggas, but it also brought me back to back, you know, I'm a huge Nirvana fan. I'm a huge, like, you know, that type of rock, you know, alternative type of sound. And, I, and Future provides, or oh, he's one of the people, like a pioneer of that kind of acid type of sound yeah, of just sure. being different. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to make sense. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to make sense. Like, it was the vibe before the vibe. So it... I'm sorry, it did for me. It gave me a very spiritual, you know, feeling. Definitely when I play that and I, I play it, I play Gucci Man right after that. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's, that's, what, that's why I like having this conversation with you two specifically, right? Because I feel like um, we, we all kind of approach music very organically. And so it's not like I won't listen to anything that's new or I only listen to things that are old or I only listen to this person or only this genre. I think there's like a, a, a openness to kind of um, to embrace music, what's happening and um, across the spectrum. Yeah, most definitely. Definitely. I, I know, I know for myself, is there, and that, that leads me to, you know, this is kind of an audible real quick to throw, but has there been a song, that has came on, that has taken you there unexpectedly, that you go to now, that you never would have went to, any anybody? Uh, no tight, Ray Sharma. You know, I remember you and I dancing in the kitchen to that song. But <laughs> you're, the first, you're the first person to put that song on for me. We remember it, exactly where we were. We were at Kay's house in the kitchen. Um, I remember that song. It just spoke to me on a spiritual level. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember looking at Kobe and it was speaking to her on a spiritual level so we were having church in the kitchen and I was like man this is like the affirmations that I need this is this is you know uh, I was a fan ever since then like so that that would be my okay point. okay what about you Kyle? it still does it for me every time it comes on I still like damn that's it that's that bitch is just the only thing that I like. I mean, you know, this is like, I, I get it. First of all, when we were in that kitchen, we were being so just on ourselves because it was, it was really, to give you context, Lawrence, it was a football game going on. And oh, really? It, yeah, see, look, <laughs> it was a it was a football game going on and we were supposed to be in the living room watching a football game with everybody else. But us being um, Howard people were in the kitchen and when I played the song, we literally lit the whole kitchen up and start partying in the kitchen. And then we told the people, "You're welcome." When we walked out the door, <laughs> so just to just to give you that, what what you got, Cos? What's the song that get you that that was unexpectedly that got you there that that took you through a moment? I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and you know, cheat a little bit and, and pick two songs because they're in two different places, but gave me the same vibe. Uh, one, R.I.P. Pop Smoke, Dior. Um, yeah, I you know I like, oh, listen to Pop Smoke, listen to Pop Smoke, and I'm like, I don't know about that. And then I put it on, and I'm like, oh, 
I know about this. Exactly. This is, this is Brooklyn house party on the block, just outside. This is this is scoop music, and you know we you know we have a, a bar or a club, so we just out. And and, and I'm like I, I love this energy. And now I think about it, I'm taking three songs real fast. <laughs> the second one, <laughs> second one is is Duke Duke Punk Ain't Dead remix. Okay. Duke Deuce is a, a cat from, from Memphis, and he got Lil John, Project Pat, and Juicy J on it, and wow. it is me in college, <clears throat> and it is me pushing people, and you know elbows thrown, and I love I love the South. I mean I, they've given us you know the South got something to say. You and welcome. the last one, my sister told me to listen to Roddy Rich, and I'm like I don't know about that. Yeah, as it goes. And I'm like you know what I'm gonna try it, and then I played the box. And I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. <laughs> um, and it goes with Jay Hall saying is that sometimes, you know, we get a little older, we might get a little slower to listen to music or, you know, I don't know about that. And then you realize, like, these, these young people, you know, they, they can take you to a place that you remember and, and you just you, you get that, that feeling back. And and so I'm grateful for all these, you know, young rappers and R.I.P. Pop Smoke for, you know, bringing that energy to the game. Because sometimes they don't have it. And now I'm like, oh, I, got, I still got a little bit of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty. That's actually pretty dope, man. Um, a song that caught me off guard. Um, I I hit the shuffle one day, and I was I was in the mode. Was this right here? I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I'm only gonna give it a little bit. <laughs> So I'm gonna cut that off before we get fine. Um, so that's Jimi Hendrix Voodoo Child. And like I had never really, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. The only time I really listened to that song when I was coming up, it was once once upon a time, it was Hulk Hogan's um opening music when he was a villain. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I mean I associated with Hulk Hogan, you know what I mean, with that. And so when it when it when it popped. One day in my um YouTube shuffle, and I was like, "Wait, this is Jimmy. This is Jimmy, man." Let me tell you, I must have played that song for about four months straight. Like wow. it was, it just zoned me out. It was, it was so different, you know. And that's the great thing about music; it makes you, you know, it can become a history lesson for you. Because if you, if you didn't know, I mean, I was, I was, I was, I listened to Jimmy, but I wasn't hearing Jimmy, as the famous quote go, you know. And so it took me down the historical pipe, like, "Yo, let me really, really rock with this dude and hear what he got to say." And it just took me. And then I was playing Jimmy and I was playing Outcast. You know what I'm saying? Just like back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Just to, just to, just to cheat, like Lauren said, like just to cheat, I was playing, I was playing both of those. So I would say Jimmy Hendrix Voodoo Child, because it's such a different song, and you can't believe this sound is coming from this brother. You know, because we've been so into thinking that that kind of sound, that guitar riff and everything come from somebody who's blue eyed, it's like to hit his Afro brother playing this, it's like, man, this is crazy. This is you know what I mean? Like this is this is this is insane. It, it just takes me different. And sometimes you need. That's the thing that I make a suggestion to, and we can kind of close out by having our own personal suggestions. And I'll I'll kick it off. Um, sometimes you need in order to help cope with your 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 anxiety. It's something totally different from your norm. Like right. routines are good, you know, to keep yourself focused, but to actually service yourself is good to like, you know. Not nothing that's going to be harmful, but like try, try new foods, you know, or, you know, try new, you know, and take this quarantine time to like, you know, try a new recipe that you never really had time to do, you know, like, and have fun with it. Like, don't take it so seriously. Like try to cook a meal that you've never cooked before. You've always been curious about. And if it comes out bad, okay, but guess what? You got time now to get it right. You know, listen to a song in particular that you wouldn't, a song that you were somewhat curious about. Open your Shazam up. Go to your Shazam. And and then, you know, whatever you watch in, in between um, a movie like your Netflix and you're chilling, when you hear a song in between that kind of be like, what song is that? Like, has Shazam tell you what that song is and then dive into that, you know, and let it and let it take you on that journey. That's my suggestion on, on coping during this time. Who's else? Kaz? Uh, I think for me, I would say um, take a musical journey. Um, one thing that I, I love doing is I love lighting up. And if you don't have liner notes, you got Wikipedia. Take a song that you love now that has a sample and go back and listen to the original, you know, and then go back and listen to that person's catalog. 
Um, you know, RIP Bill Withers. Um, that's somebody who, when I went down that rabbit hole, I found his music, right. and I was like, wow. Um, you know, this is way before my time, but it's timeless. So it is my time. Um, and you will find just so much music that came before you that you might have missed. And, and you, you, you'll learn. You'll learn about, you know, history. You'll learn about, you know, society. And you'll learn how things have changed and how things haven't changed just by taking a musical journey through the influences of what you listen to today. That's dope. That's dope. And I, I love how both <clears throat> of you gave, like, these low, low barrier um, activities versus, you know, you see a lot of these posts about, you know, build a business and, like, you know, <laughs> work out five times a day and, you know, call everybody on your call list. And it's like, no, it's too much. We're in survival mode. We're in survival mode right now. So take care of yourself. Um, and But if you're going to, you know, if you're going to, you know, have an ass and make it, you know, reasonable. And I did try a new recipe, um, tried to make some roti um, yesterday. It did not go great but it wasn't bad it was edible so okay. i'm going to try again uh <laughs> going to try again i realized i didn't have a rolling pin um and nor did i have anything that really worked to be a substitute for it so i'm going to put that wine on bottle the... did you have a wine bottle oh you know what i do have wine bottles Let's thank see, you man, I, I, tried, I, I tried i tried a water bottle and it was not a great it didn't work so thank you <laughs> I'll try that again. I'll tap in. But um, I just say, you know, kind of kind of what we had said before, just take it day by day, moment by moment. Um, honor how you're feeling, you know, um, and give yourself permission. I think, Jay, you had mentioned something earlier about giving yourself permission um, to to be not okay, you know, and, and um, you know, journaling, music, um, walking around a block, um, grounding is a great exercise as well. Just like touching living things, trees and the earth and um, seeing flowers all do amazing things to our bodies uh, physically and spiritually. So, Yeah, and take us and take a, a chance on some songs that you normally would listen to because it can disturb it, it disturbs you. And a lot yeah. of times when you're disturbed is when you're doing your best thinking. You know, a lot of times when you're familiar, you're not really making your brain waves kind of like shake up a little bit. So, you know, go listen to something. And I, I don't want to make a suggestion and assume that anybody that's listening to this song is something that they won't listen to. I, I, the three of us, you know, we have our tastes. I, 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 I pretty much listen to everything anyway. But just whatever it is, it might be hip hop that you might say you don't necessarily rock with. It might be some alternative. It might be some pop music. And listen, the songs might be trash. Have fun talking about how trash they are. Right. Sure. It, can, it can get your mind out of us just being so locked down and we can truly understand the definition of being free of our minds. You know, so that's something that, you know, I, I like to, you know, bring. And that's cool. All right. Before we get out of here, um, Charlotte, Miss, the founder of Starting With Today, is there anything we should be looking out for? Any new projects coming out? Anything we should be checking out for while we all online? Anything we should be checking for? Yeah, so we're moving a lot of our programming digitally, um, as a lot of people are. So we're pivoting. So our YouTube, Instagram Live uh, will all be up to date. Of course, we'll do more podcasts as well. Um, and then we'll look forward to actually, on the other side of this, being able to see each other in person, hug each other in person, um, and, and, and do what we do best is you know, support community and support small businesses um, that we've collaborated with and, and that we, we love. So, Kaz, what you got going on, bro? Um, I'm out here, man. Uh, check out <laughs> Golden Brown, um, new single. You know, uh, it's a one I've been working with. Okay. What do you say? I didn't know I, I ain't on it yet. I ain't spitting on it, you know. I said singing. I didn't know if you were singing on it. Oh, no, nah, I don't sing. I don't sing. I was in the back. You know, I'd be doing lawyer stuff. And I'd be like, I get move that hi hat here. And I've been working with some great people. Um, Columbia Knight's a great band. Jenna Camille. Um, there's a story in the New York Times about her being a, a creative artist who lost her, you know, source of the income. Um, and I, I'm just grateful that I've been able to work with them uh, making music. And they're putting out an album soon. And um, the new single dropped. And I, I'm just excited that I can, you know, 
be involved in music I love and um, mm. just to keep the culture going. I mean, yes. that's going on with me. Um, you know, I'm still on, on social media, still, you know, giving my views on everything. So, you know, you can follow me at the Cosby at everything, um, except TikTok, because nah. <laughs> um, and, Sean, uh, what's your social media, Sean? Social media, Instagram is true underscore Charlene. Twitter is true underscore intent. Starting with today, social media is starting with today on all platforms except for Twitter. It's starting W today. Okay. And all of my social media is all the same because I don't have that much of imagination at J Hall Radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, check out the link in the bio for all the things that I do because it'd be too much and we don't have a whole nother hour. But what I will say, we appreciate your time. Thank you guys for showing up. Your cause, man. Much love to you, bro. I appreciate you, man. Talking to you, man. We can I we can go all day. You. I love you. Yeah, yeah man. Public, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> when we get back, when we get back to uh, when we get back to dapping, man, I'm gonna give you a nice dap, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Strong, strong dap. Real strong yeah, dap. Right. My hugs are going to linger. They're going to be good, tight, lingering hugs. That's Char. right, Shar, because I do miss a good natural hair Shar hug, man. I miss it. <laughs> I miss it. I'm not going to lie. Good too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I miss it, man. I'm not going to lie. We appreciate you checking us out. Make sure you um, you know, you know, take care of yourself during this time because that's all we're asking for. And as usual, right. make sure when you listen to these songs or whatever, put some suggestions within the comments because maybe there's some songs that you can provide for us to get us through this because it's not like we got anything else to do. So as usual, be <laughs> blessed <laughs> and be successful and we'll talk to you soon. We ghost. <laughs>